All right. All right. So just to backtrack for a moment, um, we're here on our reconsideration request. I've confirmed that the record that we submitted on December the 12th is still in the possession of the board and still um, <coughs> part of the, today's proceeding. Um, and we did receive a copy of the minutes. Thank you very much. Um, so we're here uh, for reconsideration of our appeal, the denial of our appeal for two reasons. Um, one, the board's denial, um, uh, the board's refusal to hear our use appeal, and two, the board's denial of our appeal on the structures, um, as the evidence shows that the uh, one of the sheds uh, directly abuts the property lines so um, outside of, or within the, the um, setbacks of the ordinance. Um, I asked if uh, certain if members of the board had read our reconsideration request, and because I saw some heads shaking, um, um, we confirmed with the chairman that we uh, will go through our reconsideration um, request. So, first, there was um, some implication at the at the December 12th hearing that it's not the CEO's. Um, duty to enforce the ordinance, to enforce the use provisions of the ordinance, um, that's expl explicitly set forth in the ordinance. It is explicitly the CEO's duty to ensure conformance uh, with, the use provision, the, with the use provisions of the ordinance. Um, because it's the CEO's duty, he issued a notice of violation to Mr. Sweeney back in September. Um, subsequently, Mr. Sweeney filed two after-the-fact permit applications. Um, one for each of the sheds that already exist on his property. On his permit applications, which are in our first um, <coughs> packet within uh, uh, the record, um, he applied for a shed for the occupancy use, and I quote, accessory storage, animal housing, goats. For his second shed, he applied for the occupancy use for accessory storage, animals, goats, and chickens. Subsequent to those applications, the CEO issued a building permit for those sheds. The building permit, also in the first packet in the record, is made provided that Mr. Sweeney complies with all the provisions of the statutes of Maine and the ordinances of Acton regulating the construction, maintenance, and use of buildings and structures and of the application on file of this department. So by the terms of the permit, the use of the buildings and structures is within the onus of, is within the purview of the CEO. And the CEO issued this permit based on the application on file of this department. And the application explicitly states that the use is for the housing of livestock. It is our belief that Mr. Sweeney's sheds and use violate um, multiple provisions of the Town of Acton's ordinance. It's within the shoreland zone on a quarter of an acre. The town's ordinance and the town's comprehensive plan clearly do not intend for this use to be allowed. Indeed, they explicitly prohibit this use. And we believe that in denying a hearing of our appeal of the use of the property, this board erred, and we're asking for your reconsideration today and hearing of our use appeal. That? That's our request, yes. So for the new, you said for new evidence? I'm, I'm requesting that you reconsider your refusal to hear our appeal of the use of the property. That's the first request. And the second is, I'm requesting that you re reconsider your denial of our appeal of the structures, because it is our belief the evidence shows that the structures violate the setbacks of the ordinance. So two reasons for reconsideration is our request. And you have all done with her? I mean, do you have anything to add to her? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not saying. I, I, again, just looking for you to reconsider and can okay. hear us on, on the entire now. Ken, Ken, do we have any uh, thing to add to I have no new information, unless you have a question you want me to answer. I have a question. Are either one of the two structures which you were uh, included in the permit application, 
within a 10 foot setback of the property lines. I don't require a certified plot plan for a movable shed. We do for things that take foundations, we would require a certified plot plan in the Shoreland zone, but for a movable shed, we don't require that. It's not our policy. Well, I haven't seen any information telling me where that property line is. A lot of times people will have stakes in the ground and they'll say, that's my property line. Right. We call that an old hush shoe pit. If, if we're doing a house and things like that, our policy now is we require a certified plot plan. I understand. So these sheds, are these actually in the ground or are they above the ground? They're just resting on the ground. Resting on the ground. Yeah, right. so the last, at the, during the last meeting, was I understood that they, they meant the setbacks already. That they had moved the sheds. In other words, they had moved it a couple of times. They had yeah. moved the sheds. So the but property line, from what I gather, is in dispute. Mm -hmm. And according to Mr. Sweeney, he's moved it far enough away so he's going with the about his disputed line mm -hmm. that's there, so it's in a dispute which would be a full-blown survey usually to clean that type of a dispute up. But So my concern was waterfront setback and it clearly meets the 100 foot. Okay. But their point of contention is that it... it Nobody's clearly, given me no, a survey I, I showing what you're this saying. property line is that these sheds are incredible. I understand what you're saying. But their contention is that it's within 10 foot of a property line. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to prove that it's within 10 feet of the property line by uh, a survey, survey or something. something. Okay. Well, what we uh, provided to the town is uh, drawings that's also in the appeal packet showing the shed right up on um, what we believe the property line to be. That doesn't work. But, yeah, that um, Mr. Mr. sounds great, but right. it's got to be surveyed. And Mr. Spencer White, who spoke at the last hearing, said he had the survey. He had a survey done. He should have a copy of the survey. He should be able to get back in touch with the people that did the survey. And, you know, I mean, yeah, it, it should be, there should be something to substantiate where that property line was when the surveyor did his job, okay? I understand that supposedly uh, some stakes or posts were moved or removed, shall we say? But, you know, I mean, if you want us to say that this shed is right up against this property line, I have to have positive, you know, proof that, you know, this is the property line. <coughs> I, I'm not saying I wouldn't, you know, right. go in your favor, but I have to have positive proof that that's what exists, okay? Um, drawings that you su submitted and, and provided us with, those are nice, but it's not, it's not I don't think it qualifies as a legal document, okay? Right. Uh, well, we we did a, let provide drawings. We provided photographs showing the um, the shed directly abutting the fence line. Um, Mr. Spencer White testified that he did have a survey done, and stakes were removed by Mr. Sweeney. Allegedly. Um, allegedly. I'm just I'm just, yeah. I'm just, just setting it up. Just say allegedly. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, that's what he alleges. He's not here to speak for himself. Right. Unfortunately, he's having in some poor health. Um, um, so we have drawings, we have photographs, we have Mr. White's testimony. We also have the testimony of the CEO at the last hearing that he never even measured. So well, Adam said minimum. he measured because I asked Kenny directly if he measured up there, and he said yes, he would. He said he measured the 100 foot setback. He did not say he measured the 10 foot setback. He didn't really have anything to go by other than what was explained. Right. So right. the evidence before the board is that there was no measurement done. So how can a permit be issued? A permit is, is issued in violation if there's no if there's no measurement of the setback. And that is not um, that is not an applicant's that is not an appellant's burden. That's the applicant. That's Mr. Sweeney's burden to affirmatively establish his property line and demonstrate that he's outside of that ten foot setback. The problem is, is the same thing. You're telling us one thing, but the survey will, Garrett will tell us a whole different ballgame. Right. That's kind. Of, we need something legally that's going to pertain what you're saying or what they're saying. Yes, and what I'm saying is that... A drawing isn't going to do it. I agree that a survey is, is a much more definitive statement. What I'm saying is that's Mr. Sweeney's obligation. He never provided a, a, he never provided a survey that would demonstrate that he's outside of the setback and no measurements were ever, ever made. Yeah, so the so permit... Mr. Sweeney here def defending you. You're the one defending your, your property, supposedly. Right. If you want to defend your property, you've got to come to us with lines and surveys, is, yeah. even if it's a one-line type of deal that, they, that I know they can do that says yes. 
No. Uh, we're, we're, not, we're not defending our property. We're appealing a permit that was issued for Mr. Sweeney's property. We yeah, think but you're saying it's too close to yours, and that's why... We're saying it's too close to the line. Well, we have no. to have... And, 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 and the, permit, the permit cannot issue unless the CEO makes an affirmative finding that it is outside of the setback. Well, and we, the CEO uh, cannot I, make that I, unless the applicant shows him where the line is. It has nothing to do with any of okay, the Okay, let's, let's, let's stop here. Okay. okay, let's stop right here. I think the CEO went out, out there in good faith yeah. to mark out where these buildings were going to go. Okay. They were in existence. Right, but after the fact, he went out there and made sure that they were in fact where they're supposed to be. In good faith. Is that correct? Uh, I don't know what the CEO's actions were. My understanding from the last hearing the last is that he only measured the setback from the lake. All of this is is is, okay. is 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 kind of irrelevant. My point is that it's the applicant's burden, not our burden, to establish where his property line is to show that his structures but are the movable. Around that. We talked about the, move, the, the structures yes. are movable. So even if you spend all that money to do a survey. And Mr. Sweeney goes out there and moves it five feet because he can't because the building's not in the ground. I mean, it's, it's five feet. I mean, right. it's still going to be there. Yes. That's why we want you to hear our use appeal. Ken, did you have something? The use has <coughs> nothing in the zoning right. report about the use. There's everything in, this, in the order. Show me something right. specific about the that use? says you can't have goats on this piece of property. Show me something specific. Because the, the goats... From what I understand, last meeting is that they're above the shoreline. Just not zone. get too far astray here. Okay. Because there's, there's she said you said there. Yep. There, there are there are multiple provisions that say you cannot have goats in the shoreland zone. Show it they're to livestock. me. Show it to me. Section three point two definitions: agriculture, the production, keeping, or maintenance for sale or lease of plants and/or animals, including but not limited to. Forages and sod crops, grains and seed crops, dairy animals and dairy products, poultry and poultry products, livestock, fruits and vegetables, and... <coughs> okay, wait, stop. The stop, go stop, back. stop. Your first word. Go back to the very first, first word. Your first word was agricultural. Yes. Okay? It's not an agricultural lot. It's zoned shoreland. Precisely. Move on. That Move is, on. That is, that's the issue. But, and no, then you, you said, turn it to... So you said for sale. And that paragraph says for sale. Yes, and the evidence that we provided to you shows that he but is he's, selling the milk but he's not. and it's the for his, meat it's for his and child. the eggs. It's for his child. That's not what the evidence shows. We provided document after document after document that this board refused to take a look at showing commercial hours of operation, commercial presence on the food bev website, um, advertisement of meat goats. Prior. sound like a pet. Prior. As a is it still active today? Is there still active commercial operation happening on Mr. Sweeney's property today? I don't know the answer to that, but as of December 12th, when this board first convened on this issue, yes. No. Yes. No. The site was still up on the web. I will agree with that. Okay? There was nothing mentioning prices. That information was not there. Okay. Now, I'm not saying he's not, okay? but you have to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Okay, I'm happy okay. to. I can show you what we provided to you. I'm happy to. Can you want to say something? Did you have something? Oh, back with the setback issue. Um, if we did have a structure that was too close to the setback, we don't go through the Zoning Board of Appeals to that. That would simply come to us. Here's our evidence. Let's go and take care of it. So if it was within the setback, we'd take care of it. Right. It's a movable shed. Again, right. our policy isn't to require somebody to supply a full-blown survey for a, for a shed, something without a foundation. And my question was, did you uh, prior complain about being close to the border? Was that prior to him moving it? Because he did say he had moved the sheds uh, away from um, the border. So. It was both times. So it was much closer. He's moved him away, and yep. still apparently it's still close. So it must have been over the line the first time. Yeah. And that's why we don't measure side setbacks, and we're not surveys. You need a survey to right. measure yeah, that I because survey that we don't prove. If the surveyor puts a stake in the ground and we go back the next day, we don't rely on that stake. It's only when the survey is there during that time we rely on that stake. 
Otherwise, we look for documentation, a certified plot plan stamped by the survey saying, this is the line, this is the structure, this is this, and we put it in the file. Right. Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions to Ken? We've got Facebook posts, Goodweb website, uh, main miniature dairy goat association membership. Um, yeah, he can have a membership to anybody. I, I have ten memberships of different things too. It doesn't matter what your members are. It does if it's a if it's a commercial. No, it does not. I can operation. be a member of a commercial operation today or tomorrow or next week, and it doesn't matter. I certainly believe it's indicative of their operations. Their their um their logo also uh, advertises meat goats, uh, which do not sound like pets to me. Um, all of that aside, if you go to section five point two of the ordinance. It is. Uh, it governs agricultural uses, not limited to commercial. You'll see in the land use chart, which is at section 2.7, in the shoreland zone, agricultural uses are prohibited, but only commercial. It says agriculture, parentheses, parentheses, commercial. The agricultural provisions of section 5.2 are not limited to commercial use. They are just for agricultural use. And that is because this town does not intend for people to keep livestock on their quarter acre properties right on the lake. The agricultural um, provisions lay out setbacks wholly different from your general structural setbacks. And in an effort to protect this town's lakes, to protect the dug wells of the neighbors, to protect the well of the property owner. It, uh, there's a hundred foot setback for his own well to protect his own drinking water from piles of manure. And without enforcement of these provisions, I mean, the, the, the landowner himself is going to have water problems. I mean, the, this is the purpose of these provisions, it's the purpose of the ordinance, it's the purpose of this town's comprehensive plan not to have livestock and manure piles on a quarter acre in the shoreland zone. And we believe that in um, failing to uphold these agricultural provisions, um, the, the, the CEO um, acted in error, and in failing to hear us on this, the, the zoning board acted in error. Can I ask you to go back one minute? Sure. You talked about they can't have agricultural if they're saying, selling it, right? Is that what that says? This is not limited to commercial. So the land use chart limits it to commercial. I want use. the last part you read about sales. Yeah. Of the yeah. <laughs> so I want them to know about the sales. In other words, the sales. agricultural sales, the ones that you just read. The, the, the evidence? No, 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 no. no. What you just the read. Definition? The definition. Yes. Because what you're telling me is if it's for the sales purpose, he can't have sales there. At this point, we can't prove that he has sales. This is why I'm asking. But if it's agricultural, in other words, if he's just raising an animal, he can he cannot because the the well on, under the shoreland chart it is limited to commercial use it says agriculture parenthetical commercial that's what the shoreland chart so so just plain agriculture is not um, limited underneath the shoreland chart so so I agree with you that if it's not commercial you can have it according to the chart but then you get into the setbacks of section five point two. And he doesn't have enough space on his property to have any of this. It's it's too close to his well. It's too close to the neighboring wells, and it's too close okay. to the to the. Uh, to the lake. You remember? Anybody else have any questions? Or? Well, what we do about other there's other farms in town, and I would imagine most farms in town around shoreline as well. Yeah, we do. So that's sticking with one case here right now. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about anybody else. Oh, I'd like to hear Kenny's response to the um, 5.2 to 5.2 which says so it says agricultural first thing I go to is definitions for agricultural and it's going to tell me for sale or lease within within the third or fourth word is sale or lease talking to these property owners they told me it's not for sale or lease so whenever I'm dealing with a situation I have to look at a violation as how am I going to explain this to the judge? If I'm moving forward with this, 
is this going to be a, a ridiculous case that he's going to throw out because there's going to be no evidence that he is selling the stuff to dead? You're going to have a lot of old catches on the web that have been there forever that he's going to get out of there. So they're telling me it's not for sale and lease. I didn't go undercover and try to buy some goat meat or something like that. Um, I took it as they were that it's not for sale or lease, and he told me he's removing the website. He's went from 16 goats to six. The chickens are gone, I believe. So he's reduced it down to getting milk for his kids. He may give some away. He may have, be a member of the goat association or whatever. I don't know, and he can be. As long as he's not sure. running a business out of there that I can clearly catch. Had I clearly been able to prove a case, right. we would have prosecuted it. So there's nothing in 5.2 that says he can't have a goat, or four goats, or six goats. There's nothing in 5.2 that says he can't have How many he can have. We've always looked at that as a commercial venue. 5.2. Contrary to what this lawyer is saying. Yep. This lawyer is telling you that uh, part of 5.2 does not deal with commercial, it's agricultural. <laughs> that is her interpretation. So my question is, how do we, as an appeals board, and I'll take an answer from anybody that wants to throw it at me, how do we, as an appeals board, deal with this? I have two suggestions. One, the land use chart makes makes clear that there are that agriculture is not limited to commercial uses because it specifies that it is just the commercial use that's prohibited in the shoreland zone. So a plain reading of the of the land use charts makes clear that agricultural can include the term agriculture can include both commercial and non-commercial uses. If you turn to the definition of agriculture itself, Keeping with the Oxford comma rules, which the main law court just upheld, the production, comma, keeping, comma, or maintenance for sale of lease. If you read that provision using the um, rules of grammar, the sale or lease clause is only, um, only uh, referring back to maintenance. So it's the production of plants and or animals, the keeping of plants and or animals, or the maintenance for sale or lease of plants or animals. He is keeping plants and he is keeping animals on his property. That's agricultural. And I'm, uh, he's raised baby goats before, so he has six now. Who knows if he's going to have 16 again come spring. Okay. Yes. So when we first got the complaint, first thing I did was call the DEP. Yep. Um, and... <clears throat> I didn't get halfway through the first sentence, and they said, stop. It's not for sale of lease. It's, mm -hmm. If it's recreational, they can have as many as they want, unless the town is something more stringent than the DEP. And the town does, section 5.2. It's in the ordinance, you'll see that it's my job to in interpret this. Right. That is my interpretation. So when my interpretation is challenged, they'll come in, and, and that's their right, says the command, and, have the Board of Appeals look at the interpretation or the implementation of how the ordinance is written. That hasn't been changed. I've been here 20 years. It's been there for 20 years. I don't think we've ever touched it. And and maybe it's something the subcommittee of the Planning Board may want to look at. They've talked about it a little bit, but for future issues. Right. I just encourage you in, in interpreting the ordinance, which is your job, to think about the purpose of these provisions and the purpose of the of the city's uh, the town's comprehensive plan. Um, if you read 5.2, it makes it very clear that the keeping of livestock on your property is not what this town intends to allow. There there are piles of manure. Um, there are uh, there are noise and odor um, odor okay, problems. Yep, yeah, and there there are uh, landowner uh, wells, um, including the landowner himself as well. So when you're interpreting an ordinance, you need to look at the entirety of the ordinance and you need to look at the town's comprehensive plan and think, what did this town intend in creating these setbacks for manure piles by people's wells? Mr. Chair, yes. last time I knew we were an agricultural country and the in, in town. And that, as long as I've lived here, probably longer than most, it's always been agricultural. 
Absolutely, but not in the shoreland. So, I mean, this town made, made a concerted effort to protect the shoreland, right. as as did as did the, the state of Maine, and that's why we have yeah, our land use charts. But the are beyond the shoreland; mm -hmm. they're above. Mm -hmm. No, they're not. That's that's the the, the sheds yeah, are a hundred feet this, up, but, but the barnyard, the pen, extends all the way down. That's an, uh, not all the way down, but it extends well within that 100 uh, foot buffer zone. What? Ken? No, we had a conversation about the goats and if, they are, if they're at, if there's going to run off down to the water. And, and, and they said no. The, the, pens, the pens, right, okay. but the pens extend within the 100 foot setback. Um, as, and the goats, we have photographic evidence of them just milling about by the lake. They've been free range goats. Um, and I heard it before, they went back through everything we've gone through. We're not going to do that again. Okay, so well, I'm just. Just leave it as it is now. You have in addition to that 100 foot setback, there are the manure setbacks too, which are right. crucial well, from wells. You have a question for Kenny? Kenny, okay. on, on all of this that's going on and so on and so forth, my, to my knowledge, the gentleman's, how much longer does he have on his permit the first one was? Permits are good for two years if you start the first year. Okay. And, um, and how much longer does he have on this permit before you have to go out and finalize? They were just issued a couple of months ago. All right, so, so he actually still has over 18 to 20 months left to be finalized. Yep. At that point, if there's any issues, what happens? If you go out and say he did something wrong, do you make him put it back? Do you tell him no? Let's say the roof rafters were too exactly, small or something exactly. like that. Right, he'd get a field inspection report showing the deficiencies and that he had to fix those. So until the final inspection, there's not too Permits much... Permits are still open. Okay. Well, that's right. I mean, we've okay. got a slight walk on this at all. So um, it's it's for we're done, I'd like to get a motion from somebody to either deny this appeal or approve this appeal. I'd like to make a motion that we postpone doing either until we investigate further yeah, as that. to whether or not the sheds in question are within uh, setbacks or not within setbacks, whether or not piles of manure exist within 100 feet of a water supply, both the resident and or abutters, mm -hmm. We need more information if you're going to actually consider reversing our original decision. My other step we would assume that would be a survey. I'm not asking, I'm not saying I want a survey, I'm saying that I don't want to make a decision on this right this minute. I think Further investigation is required. I think it's required by this Zoning Board of Appeals to do a site walk, to actually look at the property in question. I've been down there three times. I've never walked the property because I didn't want to intrude upon anybody and get anybody all worked up. But I do know where the property is located. So that's my motion. I second that motion. If I may, the, the board is welcome onto um, can, our property. Can, it's closed right now. Part, part me. My apologies. We've got a motion to look into this, even though we've gone through all this evidence and everything else. Uh, plus, there's a lot of it that doesn't affect us. She's brought up points that make it questionable as to whether or not the CEO is required to question the utilization, okay, I need further guidance and further information and further proof <coughs> that our CEO made an error in issuing the permit due to utilization, okay. As far as I know, you get a building permit, you get a building permit for a structure, you don't get a building permit for utilization. But I'm going to grant uh, some question as to whether or not uh, there is actually utilization considerations, okay? Mm -hmm. In the issuance of a building permit, uh, do you need me to repeat my motion, sir? Uh, well, I'm just trying to clarify <clears throat> that you <clears throat> want to review this. Um, 
what Ken had already mentioned, the fact that utilization, you know, they're allowed to have goats and build a shed for the goats. So I don't know what exactly you're trying to put into on this that would affect building those sheds uh, where they are. And again, the only thing on the setbacks was the fact that they need to, uh, oops, <laughs> they need to have a survey for us to be able to judge anything on that part. But we have a motion. You want to repeat the motion? And, uh, again, no, I, don't think, I don't think it's the shed location that, that he's talking about. I think he wants to the, use, the land use itself, research some information about that, and then the shoreland, we can bring up the shoreland. But I'm, I'm curious to find out if, if that shoreland that we're talking about affects other farmers in it. Well, we're not worried about anybody out there now. That, that's out of the question. Right now we're doing, dealing with one person. We don't care about what happens to anybody else. Ken Paul has already brought up the fact that it's 100 feet from the waterway, from the shoreline. Uh, anything else that you can get from goats, dogs, cats, or whatever else you might have I, in I the think, shoreline. I think it's worth for us to do at least a, a site view, a site walk, just to, just to be out there and actually see it firsthand. Wow. Let's repeat the, what the motion might be. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to do that. I make a motion that we do not disapprove or approve the current request by this individual without further investigation. And that's all I'm going to mo motion about. I second. Thank you. Everybody understood the motion? All in favor? So you disapprove my motion? Yes. As you wish. So now that comes down to a motion that can be approved. For, so do we have a motion for denying again or approve the permit? Well, then it's, it's basically we're going to abstain and then you're back to, you won't have enough. Well, we're we're not enough. Enough. So we're, we're kind of like in a, you're a stalemate right now. No, we're not yeah, yeah, we're a stalemate. But we have to have a motion for us to vote on it. See what goes. Yeah, okay, I'm just telling the future. Yeah. Yeah, motion to deny the. Are you, make, are you making this motion, Mr. Chair? If yeah. somebody else wants to make the motion, I'm making a motion to deny the appeal. Need a second? Just for clarity, that motion's to deny the request to reconsider. Right. We have a second? Nope. Your motion failed, sir. Yes, sir. So, again, I will remake my motion. I don't think it's going to hurt just to look. Yeah, I, mean, I personally want to go do a site walk. Okay? I understand that the weather and the conditions around the particular piece of property are not necessarily conducive to doing a site walk given this particular time frame. We just had a bunch of snow. I understand that. I also understand the chair's reluctance due to mobility issues uh, that he may experience, uh, not wishing to participate. You don't have to. Why not talking about that right now? You know, I understand that. But, you know, I personally want to do a site walk. That's my motion. It doesn't have to be time soon. No. Well, this you case is hanging in the time factor. You can't. Well, not really. Yeah, well, not, not, not really, because the. The uh, petitioner, uh, the person who got the permits, has two years to do his building, okay? He's only used three months, four months of his time, mm -hmm. so he's still got a long time. You know, he's got a year and a half at least to actually solve any and all problems that may exist, okay? Do we have to act on this particular uh, <clears throat> request by the petitioner being, you know, that wants us to say that the permit was issued in error. I don't think we do. Not an immediate. Yeah, no. Okay? Immediate. So I think we so. should, you know, I think we should postpone this. All right? Do a site walk. See if there's any other information out there that we can gather and then reconvene. So what would your site walk show you? 
I'm not really sure, Kenny. This is my first time on sitting on the board, yeah. zoning board of appeals. Okay, I don't know if there's going to be any concrete evidence that's going to show me. Hey, that's where the guy's property line is. Well, that's yeah. outside of the case. Whether it means right. setback, it's yeah, the big sign that says "go to sale" right. that I missed, or you know, the UPS you know, truck back. I, I, I understand. You know, I mean, without going down there. Number one, I never saw a sign. Exactly. Okay. And like I said, I've been down there three times. Yeah. Did right. you smell anything? Didn't smell a damn thing. Me neither. Okay. But of course, given the time of the year it is, all you're going to smell is cold air. Really. Unless you get real close to a pile of manure. Real close. Um, as you well know where I live, I live within hmm, yeah. how many yards of a barn? No, I'm not even talking about Dave Langley's farm across no, the road. I'm talking about Josh Gore's place, which is right next door to my place. I call and it he a has a horse. And he has goats <coughs> at times. And he's had goats at times. Do I smell them? Nope. So, you know, again, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to find if I go do a sidewalk, but I would like the opportunity to do this before I make a decision. I think Dan was, you know, in support of doing a sidewalk. I can't speak for anybody else, but that's the way I feel. No, I feel more comfortable building out something that I actually see firsthand besides looking at papers. Well, it would be in the interpretation of what you're going to see. And it really comes down to commercial use, if we're talking use. Because I don't think the sheds are an issue. I don't think the sheds are an issue. The sheds are yeah, a permitted issue. Commercial, I don't think it's commercial use either. So where are you going to find, how are you going to determine it's a commercial use going out there? Unless I catch somebody buying goat meat or buying goat milk, no. guess what? I'm probably not going to be able to determine commercial use. And I don't necessarily feel that he's doing commercial use. He may have been in the past, okay? I understand there was a website. He did have it up, he's had it up under two different names. Why did he change the first name? I don't know. But again, a lot of that would go back, fall on the code enforcement's uh, but job. Again, they yeah. start doing commercial or otherwise. Again, okay. that's true. You know, again. We just got to know what you plan on seeing down there. I don't know what I'm going to see, Bob. Well, I don't know until I go do it. We're going to explain over. We're going around. I don't see what yeah. we're going around for. It. Well, I think we need to finalize the shoreline. That's what I'm curious about. Mr. Chair. Is there any possible way to table this situation until um, we have a better definition of what, um, what yeah, that 5.2 is? We can. That way, if we have a better definition from somebody or someplace, that would give us more reason to go forward, I think. But, I mean, DEP is saying one thing. Kenny, which I, you know, I agree that he did his job where it's supposed to do. These people have issues with it being farm. I think we need more of a definition from the 5.2. Uh, we need more definition. Going down there is not going to change no, the definition. No, that's not going to change I'm the definition. I'm just trying to go, you know, delay it. If we're down there, what's going to change? We need more of a uncomfortable look, I guess, is what I'm getting to. I, I mean, well, obviously, this town is meant to be agricultural. Well, okay. you know what I'm saying. It, and, and down there may not be. It, it, it could. Be. I'm not sure. I'm not denying anybody their pets, animals, and so on and so forth. But it seems to be this usage is not to me. My, it's not my issue. This usage because usage can change any time it wants to. In other words, it could be a chainsaw today and goats tomorrow, or have logs in it tomorrow and something else in it the next day. That's not my issue. That's a personal issue, and that's something they have to deal with. I guess what it comes down to is, like you said, it's not the building, so we're not even questioning the building. It's no, 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 so we've got no. But it's hence the truth. Um, depends on what, what to be seen down there, which if you two are uh, in a feeling of uh, seeing that on site walk and uh, we'll go post on it until the site has been seen and walked in there with me. We're doing this meeting for another day. Uh, yeah, no, I'd just like to read 
I went to follow up and do some reading and research and some, some things before I can make a good decision. On it. Is it going to hurt anybody's feeling to, you know, it's not, move it's this out a week? Postpone making a decision? Well, to a week. You guys can get down there and do this thing. I can do it, you know, tomorrow, I can do it the next day, whatever. So you're going on your own, not as a board? <sighs> you don't have to to the property. That brings you know, up other questions. Him and asking him. Yeah, it's it true. It needs to be posted. Don't forget. Yeah, site walk has to be posted. If you're going out as a board. Yeah. yeah. As an individual, you've already gone out and drove by, so I don't know what you're going to gain any further unless he's throwing the for sale sign out. So it would have to be a, make a date for the board members that want to go for the sidewalk and go down there and see it together in one group. Have you ever advertised that? Um, Brenda, how far out does the advertisement have to be and how long? I don't think it has to be advertised because it's just for the... He just said it had to be advertised. Said if you have a quorum, then it needs to be posted. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying for us to go to the site one. I mean, it's just the members who are interested in going down on the site one. It's not... If you have more than three people going. How many people do we have on this board? Seven, but you have five voting members, so a quorum is three. So three of us decide to go down to do a site walk, then it has to be posted. It does. And how much time in advance? I believe it's supposed to be seven minutes. Uh, seven. <laughs> seven, seven minutes? minutes. Yeah. Hey. Okay, going. Uh, seven, seven business days? I, seven, seven days, but you have to give whoever's doing the posting time to get that together. You get that time. I got two weeks on the and, and if Dan and I just decide that we want to go down there, I can knock on the guy's damn door. I'm not bashful by any means. No. Would that be a violation of anybody's rights? No, if they give you permission. If they give you permission to go on their property and look at it. Now, can I identify myself as being a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals? Yes. When I tell them this? Or does that... Yeah. Um, throw a legal implication out there. No, I mean, you're the one sidewalk. But you got to understand, we can't go, you one day, him another day, you know, group and a group of whoever wants to do the sidewalk. There's only two of us that are interested in the sidewalk. And it's got to be you two or anybody else that wants to go on the sidewalk. can't be just going down on your own. So we still got to follow the notice. Now we're going to do a sidewalk. So it'll probably be at least a, a week. I, I would expect that either Lois or Jen will be doing that. So I would say you need eight or nine days to get that together and get it posted for the seven days. Okay. You have to you have to name a specific day and time. Right. Do we need the owner's permission first, or do we just kind of pick it ourselves? I think that's what well, we're going to give notice, right. Okay. I think you've been given permission to go on the above's property, the applicant. Yeah. See it on the applicant's property, it's not going on the owner's property, if he, if he doesn't want it. The same. Well, All today's right. today's the 22nd. You're saying, Brenda, it will take... Eight or nine days. Yeah. So you wouldn't be looking at much before the first weekend in February. The end of the first week in February, <coughs> probably. That's crazy. I won't be in attendance then. And I won't be either. <sighs> so I, I, yeah, I won't be in attendance. Because it doesn't help. Most of my February. <coughs> I'm coming to walk your property. <laughs> I'm coming by myself. Do you have any issues with that? I've, I've lived in Maine my whole life. I moved to this town in 1966. Is there anybody else who's interested in going on walk? I don't care about the snow. So there's four of you. You guys need to pick a date. Five to four months ago. Who's going? I want to go. She wants to go, and he wants, he wants to go. To go. So and you two want to go, and there's a bitch against maybe a little dance, but it's going to go. But it's got to be when he's not gone. 
right, when are you leaving, Mr. Um... Don't know. I'm not going to say on the television. <laughs> I just didn't know because the weekends we're looking at is either the second, the ninth, the sixteenth, or the twenty-third. And I've already got the plans the twenty-third. I have another meeting. You're referring to those cases. So, I think it's, he, he doesn't really didn't care about the wells. No, no, it's not that it didn't affect it. No. I mean, everybody around here has got animals. Mm -hmm. It's also animals. Yeah. It's just a fact of life. I know. And it's not a goal to work back out. I'm worried about the wells. So that doesn't really make any sense. It's just a good thing. You can't make a decision without sidewalk. You're going to have to do something. Well, they're saying that they animals are bad. Pen, how close? But the a little bit of water. Is there a fence up there or something to keep them from how far from the water? The pen area? Yeah. Yeah. What? How far? How far is the pen to it? How far can the goats toward the water? Go toward the water. The pen? I never mentioned it. No, the goat. Oh, yeah, on the how far? They're free. The rows in a pen. Yeah. They're always in a pen. They're not wandering yeah, down to the lake. It has numbers. to be so many feet away from the water. No. It's just a fence. So a fence is exempt from zoning because the structure is structure. Well, the question was how close to the water. Yeah, the goats get. It's got to be outside. So it's down to the beach. The goats get? Sure. Sorry, hmm? Not on this lot, they can't. Right. There's no restriction on how close you can bring them down. Because they're pets. It's not a commercial use. And that's been our office's interpretation through this project is it's not a commercial use, it doesn't apply, none of this matters. So it's a it's a good support for shoreland. Bodies of water. No, it's just not. And there's farm land. Yeah. So this applies to a lot of farms when it comes to shoreland. I appreciate For commercial? No. Commercial as well. That's what it was down to. We can't have that many farms on the body of water. You have 125 miles of shoreline zoning in the town of Acton with resource protection. And how many acres of resource protection? I, I, well, I don't know. Because that, 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 that's what I need to, I need to clear yeah. up. Because it's all of Goose Pond Road going down Goose Pond. That's all of RP. So, and there's, I think, two farms just going down there that right. are RP. Right. Personal. <laughs> Personal use. And that's right. fine. Exactly. All right. That's my interpretation, and it's fine. Right. Their attorney has a different interpretation. If we go find another interpretation, another attorney will find another interpretation because that's their job is to argue their client's interpretation. I understand that. So it boils down to if this is agriculture, commercial, or pets. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find any evidence that this is continuing to be future. I think in one of the applications it says it's impending or it's going to be and I mean none of us know what's going to happen tomorrow, never mind guarantee it. But if something changes tomorrow or you find out you can go down there and issue a violation. Correct. <coughs> and that's why I asked how many years out or what he's out at to make sure that... No, that's just the structure. Yeah. And so it right. changes all of a sudden. He has the right, right to go down there and enforce it. Exactly. That's what Ken Paul, the CEO, does. Exactly. Right. So it's not something that couldn't change in the future. So are we going to table this well, that's temporarily? Dan doesn't have to do a sidewalk, and the only one has to do a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of with you probably on that. Mm -hmm. so, okay. And I'll be down there within the next two or three what days. What do you need to know? It doesn't matter what I need to know. Doesn't what matter. No, he just clears himself. Okay. I mean, I, you know, yeah. 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 Thank you. Decision. I, I'm not asking you to go out and you know yeah. shovel snow and all that. The rest of it with the board. I have a couple of people in the middle of that too. That's what we're supposed to do. It's not open. We're hashing this out. Okay. So let's get this one. All right, so the, the, the top of the yeah. bottom was the manure, okay? There's nothing in the, the DEP, so that's fine, according to the last one. Yeah. Okay. So 
about some new point. <coughs> the lights are going out to the wall. It's like since it's not commercial, it's residential. Their paths, it's fine. If they do get down, there. if what? If they do, if they are down there, it's not. It's not since it's not commercial. Right, right, right. Yeah. I don't like that at all. And because they're not commercial, they can go right. The goats can go right down to the water. It's because they can drink. It's like drinking out of a puddle. It's the same thing. I don't know. But if you have the area with a fence, and I'm not saying that there's a fence, you know, and to what extent the fence restricts the goats' movements. Okay. If there is a cyclone fence, chain link fence that has been erected and it encloses the penned area or encloses the area where the goats are housed and the area that is quote quote barnyard then the goats aren't going down to the water right. ever and they are unless somebody pens. lets them out but they are in pens so these goats are in pens and there's a fence there already right? i have a date when are you coming? Hmm? When are you coming? Uh, I will get your phone number and I will call you to let you know. Okay. Don't leave without water. Yes. 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 So, we can go. so I, I don't think a board member should be gathering information by himself. It should be a board group gathering the information. But, and again, tonight's meeting was new information to reconsider it. I hear you. I haven't really heard any new information. I heard the same stuff last time that was in your packets that the board didn't want to consider last time. And now we're going to consider I was hoping to get some resolution here. You're probably looking at me, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, if you have any other questions? Yeah. Colonel Bell. Personally, no, I don't have any other questions. Well, okay. Okay. I don't really feel that, you know, as Kenny Paul just said, no new information has come forth. Uh, did we actually do due diligence in considering the information that was provided prior. Again, when I initially made the motion at the last meeting, as far as I was concerned, it was strictly you were appealing the permits for the buildings. Okay, I don't care about usage. You know, that was my opinion. And to some extent, it still is my opinion. I could house dynamite in a shed, and unless somebody finds out about it and objects about it, you know, I could have that there for a long time before anybody, you know, might say anything. Um, if that's what we want to do, then fine. Because as it stands now, somebody make a motion. And then we can move on for motion. I feel like I'm sitting in post, so I have no idea what to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, right now we're we'll for a motion either to deny or approve. Mm -hmm. It's appealed. The re re reconsideration. Can I ask mm -hmm. what, what would approval entail? So we're 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 denying or approving looking back at the information we got. Does hmm. what? Approval? Or just appeal? Right. It's not an appeal, it's, it's a reconsideration. A reconsideration is an appeal, right. Um, then if you vote yes on the reconsideration, then we have to go into uh, the issue of the permits for those two sheds. If the denial, denial of the reconsideration, then uh, the alternative is go to the Superior Court and take it there, which they have every right to do that too. And that might be a better venue for this. I'd like to hear a motion of some sort. Make a motion to deny the reconsideration. In a second? I'll second. All in favor of denying this reconsideration? Vote yes. All in favor? That's four out of five. So the motion has passed on the denial of the reconsideration. And we thank you for your time. Uh, and I'm still coming to see you. And I like to thank you for the uh, no, I just think you need to be able to a different level. I'm not, I'm not going to be going down there as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm going down there to visit a friend and not her. <laughs> 
before somebody casts his Persians upon me. Say that word again with nobody's coming. I'm sorry? Nobody's Say that word again. Nobody's coming. I can't even remember what I said. <laughs> That's like me. My, my memory is the second thing you got. Are you writing that down, so Dara? Yes, I am. Oh, all right. So I was going to put it on the paperwork. That's okay. Really, this, don't get discouraged. This is extremely complicated. It is very complicated. Um, Shall we? Very straightforward. Please don't say it. I would give you one before. I would just want to take the day or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Day. Yeah. 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 like I said, I do have some friends. Yeah. 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 Refresh your memory. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Over a couple of minutes. Just want to. What it comes to? Four or five minutes. Well, what's the other thing? Yeah, it's. I think it's ten dollars. Is that like where do you draw the line? They used to live on the street and they sold the house. They went five pounds. They were in a journey. They sold that house. They bought a house all the way down to the end. I'm sorry. Turn the reading. Sorry. Motion to do. Motion to turn the reading. Just so you guys know. It's on tape. 